In this lecture, I will take you through some cases where the law of demand does not hold. These are called exceptions to the law of demand. Before discussing these exceptions, it is important to understand the difference between exceptions and assumptions. You should not confuse these two. While discussing the law of demand, we assume that the factors that affect the quantity demanded of a good other than its own price remain constant. So other factors remaining constant is the assumption that we take while talking about the law of demand. On the other hand, exception refers to those rare situations where law of demand does not hold even when assumptions of the law are maintained. So if you start buying more of good X when the price of good X rises, keeping other factors constant, then this case would be an exception to the law of demand. Let's take some examples. Suppose that you want to buy sunglasses and you have shortlisted two of them. One is for $50 and this is an ordinary brand which is not so famous and the other one is for $300. This is of brand R which is a luxury brand and say you know in advance that there is not much of a difference between the quality of these two. So which one would you buy? Well, the answer to this question is not obvious. You may prefer the sunglasses that cost $50 but I am sure there are people who would want to buy the R brand sunglasses for $300. And in fact, this is why the R brand is in business. Because there are a lot of people who buy R brand sunglasses even if they are expensive. And this is because these people desire to buy luxury goods. They don't buy these sunglasses because its quality is worth its price but because these sunglasses are associated with a prominent brand, brand R. It is their way of showing off and telling others that I am rich. These type of goods which are used as status symbols are called Veblen goods. Some other examples of these type of goods are diamonds, antique paintings, luxury cars, etc. The law of demand does not hold when we are dealing with Veblen goods. This is because in this case, the higher the price of a good, the higher the prestige value that consumer attaches to it. And if the price of the good falls, then the prestige value of the good falls and the consumer stops buying it or say buy less of it. So if tomorrow the R brand reduces the price of its sunglasses from $300 to $150, then rich people will stop buying it and they will switch to some other expensive brand that they can buy to show their status. So this is the first exception to the law of demand. The second exception to law of demand is Giffen goods. Giffen goods were named after Sir Robert Giffen. Giffen goods are a type of inferior goods and the law of demand does not hold for them. So the quantity demanded of a Giffen good increases with the increase in price and decreases with the decrease in price. It is important to note that all Giffen goods are inferior goods but all inferior goods are not Giffen goods. If you are not familiar with the concept of inferior goods and normal goods, then for now just keep in mind that inferior goods are those goods which have an inverse relationship with income. So if your income rises, then you consume less of it. On the other hand, normal goods are those goods which have a direct relationship with income. So if your income rises, you consume more of it. I will cover the concept of inferior goods and normal goods in much more detail while discussing the shifts in demand curve. Coming back to our discussion on Giffen goods, let us take an example to understand this. Say there is a poor household and their monthly consumption of food grain is 30 kgs. This is the minimum consumption that they need to survive. 
Let's assume that they can afford to spend only $200 on food grains and they consume two goods, bajra and wheat. And out of these two goods, bajra is their staple food and is much cheaper than its substitutes. So let's say currently they are consuming 20 kgs of bajra and 10 kgs of wheat and the price of bajra is $5 per kg and price of wheat is $10 per kg. So here their total monthly expenditure on food grains is exact $200. Now if the price of bajra rises from $5 to $6, they won't be able to consume the same bundle as it will now cost $220. So they will have to alter their consumption pattern in such a way that they could get 30 kgs of food grains in $200. To do this, they will have to reduce the consumption of wheat by 5 kgs and increase the consumption of bajra by 5 kgs. This means after the rise in price of bajra, the household will start consuming 25 kgs of bajra and 5 kgs of wheat to meet their minimum monthly consumption target and this will cost them exact $200. So the quantity demanded of bajra will increase from 20 kgs to 25 kgs despite the increase in its price and this violates the law of demand. This happens because the household is eating bajra not because they like it but because they cannot afford to buy wheat because of its high price. When the price of bajra rises by $1, they have no other option but to reduce the consumption of wheat and increase the consumption of bajra because bajra is still cheaper than wheat. So this is all about the two main exceptions to the law of demand, Veblen goods and Giffen goods. There could be some other exceptions as well. For example, if consumers expect a shortage of a particular good in the near future, then they would start buying more of it in the current period even if the price of the good is rising. This is because they fear that they won't be able to get this good in future. And even if they are able to, they might have to pay even more in the future. So this is all about the exceptions to the law of demand. Before I proceed further, it is important to note that the goods for which the law of demand does not hold have an upward sloping demand curve. As you can see here, in case of an upward sloping demand curve, the price and quantity demanded are positively related. So higher the price, higher the quantity demanded. For the rest of the course, I will assume that the law of demand does hold and the demand curve is downward sloping. 